Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We are still in the Easter season. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Lutheran, where God calls us to be welcoming, growing, and sharing in God's grace. We are so very glad you have joined us for worship. For those new folks God has called to worship, whether online or on site, a special welcome to you. Uh, please let us know you're here by either filling out the portion and your bulletin and placing it in the basket if you are uh, on site. If you are online, please uh, add a comment in the comment section to let us know you are here. A couple of worship items for all of us this morning. For those worshiping with us online, please have your bread and grape-based beverage or water available for Holy Communion if you're participating in that part. Also, we'll be joining, you and I will be joining together after the worship service uh, for fellowship time via Zoom. That link can be found either in the bulletin online or in the description portion of the social media you are watching us on. For those in the worship center, uh, specific communion instructions will be given to you during the announcements. Now we continue to worship God as we prepare our hearts and minds during the prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water. <laughs> Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the, deep and, over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is water. Hallelujah. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have the fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And kids, if you want to head out with Miss Alyssa for story time. We have one more sheep heading that way. There we go. Well, it's been a week. Most of the flowers have been taken away. A musical, musical offerings, while beautiful, are more ordinary this morning. And you've probably noticed that there is more room in the pews perhaps than there was last week. At least if you attended the 9 or 11 o'clock worship service on site on Easter. It's been a week since we heard the good news from the young man in the empty tomb who greeted the Marys in Salome. He has been raised. He is not here. It's been a week. The Easter candy is now on the clearance rack if there's any left at all. It's been a week. We're returning to our normal schedules for work and school. It's been a week. One with news stories that continue to tell a story that seems to contradict the good news we heard about last week. He has been raised. He is not here. And transformed it into something more akin to while he may have been raised, he's not here, so where is he? Maybe this week of the ordinary common life of God's people has taken the shine off last week's um, celebration. And if it has, we can hope there's the possibility that we'll hear something this morning that can bring back the luster of last week. And what do we get? The same lesson every second Sunday of Easter, every single year. The story commonly known as the story of Doubting Thomas. But before we let our minds jump to that place of been there, done that, 
Let's just take a moment to review what's been going on in the life of the disciples since Mary first came rushing in, in exclaiming, I have seen the Lord, at least according to the Gospel of John. See, that's where Mary ends up in the Gospel of John anyway, even though she doesn't start there. According to John, when Mary first encounters the empty tomb, she rushes back to Peter and the disciple known only as the one whom Jesus loved to tell them that someone, not sure who, has taken Jesus' dead body and she doesn't know where they've taken him. Peter and the other disciple engage in what amounts to a foot race. The other disciple winning and reaching the tomb first. The other disciple peers in sees the folded grave clothes, but doesn't enter the tomb. Peter goes in, sees the folded linens. The other disciple then enters, and we're told, believes. Then Peter and the other disciple simply go home. Now Mary hangs around, encounters Jesus, although she doesn't initially, initially uh, recognize him. She actually thinks Jesus is the gardener. But ultimately, once Jesus speaks her name, she recognizes the risen Jesus and then returns and announces to the disciples huddled together, I have seen the Lord. That evening, It's where our story starts this morning. The disciples are locked in a room, overcome with fear from uh, the past few days' happenings, when Jesus stands among them and greets them with words that we repeat each week in worship. Peace be with you. They're then commissioned to go out and about in God's world, just as Jesus has been uh, going about, showing the world the love of God. But first, Jesus delivers on his earlier promise to them and breathes the Holy Spirit into each one of them and then gives them the keys to the kingdom. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. That's the first Easter experience according to the Gospel of John. But you see... Thomas wasn't part of that first Easter experience. He's missed all of that and is left with nothing more than the disciples' uh, recollection of their experience with Jesus. And it seems that the disciples' recollection of their experience with the risen Christ wasn't enough to spark Thomas's belief engine. And Thomas reacts honestly as potentially many of us would have reacted. Now, I think our translation gives Thomas a bad rap, quite frankly, but his reaction is more disbelief than actual active doubt. To be sure, though, Thomas has chutzpah. He has the guts to put into words what others may have been thinking themselves. It's not that he doubts the story he's been told. He simply claims that if he can have this same experience with the risen Jesus that they've already had, then he can put this trust in the resurrection of Jesus. For Thomas, for others in our community, and if we're honest, maybe even for ourselves, belief in Jesus isn't something we can experience vicariously. Belief in Jesus comes most profoundly through an actual experience with the risen Lord himself. So then it's a week later. And once again, the disciples are gathered together, this time including Thomas. They're in a room closed off to the world by an unlocked yet still closed door. And Jesus enters the room. And this is where the story takes the turn. Jesus greets them again. Peace be with you. Read into that, even Thomas. And then without another word from Thomas, Jesus meets him in his unbelief 
and invites Thomas to allow his unbelief to be turned into belief, to experience the reality of Good Friday turned to Easter for himself. And the invitation alone is all that it takes as Thomas boldly proclaims words that even the believing disciples haven't said yet, my Lord and my God. The good news this week comes to us as well as Jesus meets us in the ordinariness of our lives and invites us to experience once again the reality of Good Friday turned Easter. The good news this week is that Jesus doesn't wait for us to get our belief system into proper working order before he offers us the gift of peace. The good news, good news that brings back that Easter luster is that Jesus invites us, even when we don't seem to have much left in the belief well, to allow his very presence among us to transform our disbelief into belief, to move us to a place where we too can shout as loudly as we shouted, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia, Thomas's proclamation from this week. My Lord and my God. Let's say that together. My Lord and my God. Thanks be to that God. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Bring about restoration in areas of overuse. Accompany rescue and recovery workers in Taiwan as they deal with the aftermath of this most recent earthquake. God of grace, your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide leaders across all communities that they might seek justice and mercy so that no one lives in fear. God of grace, your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for relief from illness, suffering, or pain, especially Brooke Shrum Jr., Ron, Dale, Michael Stradling, Dorothy Griffin, Laura, Laura Dareth, Terry, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Glenn Hardesty, Jane Cox, Ryan and Dave, Lynn Smith, Lyndall Heitzelman, Peggy Helwig, Ruby Gostell, Katie Lawrence, Tracy Strimple, Paul and Dawn, Brian Shaw, Jerry, Lynn Anderson, Mike, Bev Dias, Keith Brown, Adam Hayes, Karen McDonald, Madeline Rubin, Stacy Allison, Carolyn Culp, John, Belinda, Brianna, and Joshua, Cheryl Stradling, Ron, Ray Facto, Jenny, and those we, may, we name aloud or silently in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who have died and now rest in your eternal love. Grant consolation to all who mourn and grieve. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Now the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. A couple of announcements for us this morning. For those that are gathered here in the worship center, we will be communing around the rail this morning. So at the direction of the ushers, you come forward, you receive the bread. We have gluten-free wafers available if you need those. And then receive either the wine or the grape juice, and your empty cups can go in the baskets that are provided. Uh, if you need to have communion brought to you in the pew, please let the ushers know. One thing is you'll notice, I won't be participating in the, the dis distribution of Holy Communion. I've had a, a cold this week, and a positive COVID test earlier in the week and all that good fun stuff. I'm, I'm okay now, but I'm not going to just breathe on everybody today, okay? Um, I invite you to review the various announcements included in our emails, our website, and our social media channels, and our worship bulletin. A couple of items that to, just to highlight. You're invited to assist with our upcoming uh, set of meals that we provide at the Grassroots Day, Grassroots Day Resource Center. We'll be there on April the 15th. So you can sign up for a particular food item on our website. That's at firstlutheranec.org slash get involved. You can also sign up for our semi-annual Frederick Road cleanup, which is scheduled for Saturday, May 11th. You can sign up on our website the same place, firstlutheranec.org slash get involved. There are a couple of two really important activities coming up on April the 21st, which is two weeks from today. So please mark your calendars and prepare to participate. The first one is our Firm Foundations Capital Campaign will officially kick off on Sunday, April the 21st. We'll begin with a special prayer walk in which you are all invited to participate. The prayer walk takes place after we've had a moment to get a coffee and snack during our coffee hour, so please check out the table in the narthex to sign up to participate. For those of you who are online, you can uh, please be on the lookout for information on how you can also participate in that prayer walk. Also that Sunday, we'll be, we will be receiving a special offering in support of our siblings affected by the Key Bridge collapse. There are many ways that you can participate. Um, I mean, obviously the most critical need right now is funds or money. So we'll be collecting that special offering that will then forward to our synod for further distribution. And all synod congregations have been invited to participate on that day. You can uh, donate socks, uh, white cotton athletic or tube socks in adult male sizes are what's needed. Um, and then they're also seeking donations of home-baked cookies. You put them in a quart bag, um, label them, particularly if they have nuts in them, uh, and then we'll take them to the Senate office, they'll freeze them, and then they'll distribute them as needed. So you'll, you'll find additional details will be in our upcoming communications, both our email, website, as well as our bulletins. And so now it's time for us to remember God's generosity, for us to commit to being generous ourselves, as we remember that God is good. All the time. And all the time. Amen.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Madeline and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. living and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and the glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Gathered as one in the body of Christ, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. i 
And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in, your, in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and our friend. Amen. Amen. Each year, First Lutheran awards a scholarship to a graduating high school senior from the Payne Scholarship Fund, a fund that was created in memory of the Reverend Herbert M. Payne, who served as First Lutheran's pastor from 1945 to 1972. In the history of First Lutheran, Pastor Payne uh, was its longest serving pastor. This year, we had two very deserving candidates apply for the scholarship. Both of these candidates truly live into Paul's declaration to those in the church of Corinth. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given th through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to that same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of powerful deeds, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Given the strengths of each person's application, their dedicated service to Christ's church, and the manner in which they both live into their faith, the selection committee has chosen to award both of these individuals a scholarship this year. So I ask that they and their families come forward and kind of gather like this way where people can see your faces. There you go. I know, I'm, I'm just gonna stand far enough away and all that good fun stuff, so I won't, okay. Our first recipient rejoined First Lutheran when she was, uh, at, when she and her family relocated to Howard County when she was five years old. She, as well as her family, have been involved in our annual Christmas basket ministry, a way of serving that exemplifies her understanding of Jesus' answer about which was the greatest commandment, to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. She's also helped with Vacation Bible School, a ministry that touched her life when she was younger and one in which she hopes touches the lives of those children who participate in this ministry in this season. She will graduate from Glen Elk High School and hopes to attend Stanford University after graduation. Our second recipient has been a member of First Lutheran for many years. He was also a student in our preschool. He too has been active in our Christmas baskets ministry, active in the feeding ministry of Breath of God um, Lutheran Church. During the pandemic, he was one of our Thanksgiving Eve speakers and has been a past helper at a variety of preschool functions. While he gives thanks for his God-given athletic gifts, he also gives thanks for the breadth of gifts he has received from God, humor, kindness, and intelligence, and most especially empathy which is a gift that allows him to serve as an uplifting sojourner with others around him. He will graduate from Loyola Bakerfield High School and has been accepted to the University of Maryland College Park, where he will be a student and athlete when, uh, as he continues his baseball journey. It is indeed my pleasure on behalf of First Lutheran uh, to award the 2024 Herbert M. Payne Scholarship Award to Anna Gannon and Jacob Hawk. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter, of Easter hope, bless you now and forever. Hallelujah. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>